This is part two of my Avengers collection. Now this is um, issue 35. I love this red cover. The story itself, that's fine. I mean, it's got the living laser. Not one of the greatest villains of all time, but I must admit, I always loved it. Poor old Captain America. It just looked odd. And uh, there was an epic collection where it showed uh, the cover, the original. So uh, slight change there in the cover. But it was a still a really, really good story. Goliath, they never really certain what they were doing with Goliath. One time he was 12 foot, then he could go up and down. I always wish that they just had the stories where he was like Giant Man, where he could literally go to any size. And uh, that would have been fine for me. But they always added this complexity into the story that I think was just... But I suppose it was good in terms of having him bash through things because clearly if he was about 50 foot tall, it would be quite hard to do that sort of that scene. But uh, still, I wish they had... Also, of course, I wish they would uh, allowed the Wasp to vary in size. Could never understand why they didn't do that. Anyway, some really great covers there. I must admit, I love, of course, one of the classic Fantastic Fours. And of course, you've got the Fantasy Masterpieces and uh, Marvel Tales. Love those reprint issues. And with this one, of course, you've got all the way through to the end. You've got the Black Widow, you've got Hawkeye, obviously having problems there, Captain America, etc. And then you've got the good old Marvel Checklist. I loved the Marvel Checklist. And at this point, Fantastic Four 58, Spider-Man 44, You've got 435, some real classic stories. And of course, you've got the letters page at the back as well. Always enjoy the letters pages. Then, now this, there was a bit of a change in terms of stories because, of course, Roy Thomas took over. Before that was Stan Lee. Then we had a sort of bit of change. And i actually probably more fond of these stories now than I was back at the time uh, when, I, when they were first coming out. I must admit, I was never particularly uh, that. But they, they're okay stories. And you've got uh, the Scarlet Witch. You've, of course, got Black Widow in the story at this point. But um, I always love these. Um, of course, it was uh, this one, this copy, price stamp there, half price, etc. You wear five pence. I mean, normally, they'd put it over a face or something just to ruin the comic completely. Oh, saying that, there's another half. So obviously, this went through quite a few different half price uh, dealers. One up there as well, one down there. So that's the Ultroids. The next story it was a continuation Ultra to Conquer a Colossus. Which is a bit unusual, actually, in many ways. I always thought the titles quite often were ridiculous. I never understood the titles. And, of course, when you actually get into the next page, To Conquer a Colossus still didn't really make much sense, particularly. But that was the way they did this, the titles. And this, of course, is by scripted by Roy Thomas. Brilliant artwork by Don Heck. But I have to say the, the villains were a bit of a non-entity. But at least you've got a great story with... Black Widow, and she seems to obviously at this point become more part of the Avengers. And you've got all the way through to the back, of course, you've got the classic good old Mora there. Now, these are the sort of things that they don't include in the omnibus editions. I would love to see these sort of things. This is the sort of stuff I love. And also, of course, the checklist. And at this point, of course, you've got X Men uh, 29, the Mimic. You've got, oh, that probably. Roy Thomas, I expect for that. I don't know. It was uh, the period, obviously, when Roy Thomas took seemed to take over most of the things. I love Roy Thomas's work, so uh, so this one to conquer a Colossus, even if the title's slightly odd. Then on to good old Dragon Man. I love the Dragon Man. Poor old. Now this is more to conquer a Colossus because you've got poor old uh, Goliath looking a bit worse for wear. Brilliant uh, John Buscema work there, and of course classic. Once you go into the actual, let sleeping dragons lie. At least the, uh, sometimes that never matched. Sometimes you'd have this sort of title and then you'd turn over the page and it would be sort of like, Cat does this or something. It would be a very non-descript title. you got Diablo, of course. It was it. Now, Diablo was never the greatest character. He was, a, of course, a Fantastic Four character. But you've got that dramatic Dragon Man on the cover. Actually, you wouldn't even really think that this was an Avengers comic because the Avengers are quite small and slightly oddly positioned beneath, underneath his legs. And I love his uh, sort of, uh, he's obviously got some pants on as well. That's really quite useful. So I've got the Avengers there. Then on to, uh, now I haven't got every single Avengers, so you notice there's a bit of a gap. So this is 43. So you've got into 43, Red Guardian. Now this clearly is a much more of a Black Widow story, uh, which is very odd because <laughs> Black Widow is not even on it, on the front cover, which is very odd. You've got obviously the good old headshots. They did quite a few these sort of covers. I noticed uh, there's an, just looking at this one just over here, you've got another one with sort of headshot of all the various people. Very strange. But anyway, 
even more strange since Red Guardian, of course, is sort of Captain America, but for the Russians. They always introduce these characters into Marvel and, you know, destined to be the most talked about supervillain of the year. Well, sadly, it doesn't always seem to be the case. Uh, you never, what happened to him? What happened to the Red Guardian? Who knows? But, of course, you've got the Black Widow. And weirdly, it is a Black Widow story, predominantly a Black Widow story. You've got, uh, you see the Black Widow there. You've got the Red Guardian talking there. But not on the front cover. Hmm, very strange. You would have thought they would have put her on the front. Then you've got the Avengers. Now, you've got a good old uh, Whirlwind here. This is issue 46. Behind the mask of metal lurks the sense. Hmm. Well... I guess he's only whirlwind because he's got a mask off. He was someone behind the mask because he's just normal identity. Of course, there's a twist there, as usual. But, of course, you've got uh, the Wasp and Goliath again. Back to being Ant-Man. So, obviously, he did, at this point, shrink. Again, why they didn't have the other way around with the Wasp, I don't know. Heads again. And you've got the whirlwind. That's always quite good stuff because he quickly, obviously, makes a decision, change from his uh, normal life into... Whirlwind, of course, before that, he was the human top in the good old... I really love those stories. Tales to Astonish, they had the uh, good old human top stories. That was when Giant Man was in the magazine. Then you got the Magneto story. This is issue 47. This is quite a tatty one. But this is very unusual. He didn't do it too often, this sort of... Uh, sort of more like the Justice uh, League of America sort of thing, where you would have to sidebar with all the... And, of course, you've got, uh, obviously, Quicksilver and Wanda and Magneto. Now it's a slightly unusual start to the magazine's falling apart again, and you've got Magneto, because of course he was taken off to this planet by the stranger back in the old X-Men comic. So you've got that story, he's of course now back again, and Magneto is obviously battling against Quicksilver, obviously part of his evil of you know Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. I'm not for certain they were called that anyway themselves. They just had that title for some weird reason. They were obviously brotherhood of pretty decent mutants as far as they were concerned because they were fighting for what they thought. However, mine is the power. This is obviously a great uh, cover with Quicksilver and uh, obviously you've got the rest of the Avengers at the background. For some weird reason, hurtling towards the uh, two characters there. I always often thought some of these covers were very strange. but And weirdly for this one, I haven't actually got the uh, first page. You've actually go straight into the story with the uh, uh, obviously uh, Typhoon. It was a character. Yes, Typhoon. All the heavens tremble. Now, he doesn't really appear in this story much, but he just briefly, obviously, for the next issue. Now, I'm never certain why they didn't have Magneto for issue 50. Would have been a much more obvious character to have had. Uh, maybe Magneto and Kang or something. Some, some big characters. But no, you had Typhoon. Very strange. Anyway, you've got Magneto, obviously, uh, I don't want to spoil that page, but some great, great artwork all the way through this. Oh, we've got there. And at this point, um, yeah, got Hawkeye there. Magneto, Toad, of course, poor old Toad. He could have been a contender, but clearly, I don't know what ever happened to you. Obviously, most of the stories later, it was always Magneto. I, I assume he just went off and did his own thing. But you've got Typhoon, a Titan strides the land. And, of course, you've got the letters page, etc. I haven't got 50. So we're on to now 51. And this is a Thor, Iron Man, and the restored power of Goliath. That's really quite good. He's got his powers back. And he's obviously quite happy about that. Um, it's slightly uh, odd that they kept on doing that. But this was a collector story. Collector is always a great character. He turns up quite regularly. One of the elders of the universe. I don't know why he kept spent all his time trying to collect them. Because he never succeeded, you'd think he would have learned his lesson. But I guess if we're immortal, I suppose you could just try, try, try again. And he did quite often. So you've got a great story. Obviously, not the uh, other Avengers. So you've got all the other Avengers are sort of really sort of sidelined in this. You've got, so, uh, well, actually, I suppose Hawkeye's there. Oh, there's Hawkeye. So he was in it a bit. Not very much. Of course, uh, at this point, I think Quicksilver and Wanda disappeared from the storyline because that was, uh, as you notice, that they've obviously now, now I've, unfortunately, haven't got, I've jumped forward a little bit here because this is issue 60. Of course, the uh, Vision story, etc. Of course, crazily expensive now, Vision and all that sort of stuff. 
So uh, now we've got Yellow Jacket in the story. I really quite liked Yellow Jacket. Though, again, I really like Goliath as well, of course. But you've got, of course, the good old headshots. Going. It's quite a reasonable copy uh, for me anyway. Most of my collection, most of it fallen to pieces. One shilling it was, uh, five pence. In, in Tool Death to this part, obviously, you've got the wedding story. And uh, obviously, Miss Janet Van Dyne is marrying Yellow Jacket. At this point, of course, we do not know that Yellow Jacket, who he is. So obviously, it just says Yellow Jacket. And uh, of course, you get the uh, a very slightly underpowered team to turn up for the villains in the story. But, you know, at the end of the day, the ringmaster and his circus of crime. Oh, I love the old uh, crystal there, of course. Crystals in the story. And you've got, of course, all the other fan fantastic four. This is absolutely brilliant. Obviously, you've got all of the... the oh, also, even the X-Men there as well. I think that's virtually all of the characters. Even Black Knight at the back there. Doctor Strange, of course. Uh, Hulk wasn't invited. Poor old Hulk. I mean, he was slightly... Or Submariner. I didn't bring him along. Then... Issue 62, you've got Black Panther and the Monarch and the Man Ape. It's obviously more a Black Panther story, so you've got a very heavily Black Panther story. Of course, you've got the uh, Vision, of course, is part of the team now. And Black Panther. This is issue 64. There's quite a change in the Avengers at this point. Lots of churn of characters. We've got sometimes Thor turns up, Iron Man turns up. We've got Black Panther now. We've got Hawkeye is now Goliath. You've got uh, Vision. Of course, I haven't got that uh, issue that uh, where Vision is introduced. You've got Yellow Jacket. You've got the Wasp, etc. And also you've got quite a lot of churn in terms of the artists as well. Gene Colan, Barry Smith, Sal Buscema, John Buscema. Quite a bit of churn, but some really brilliant Gene Colan art in this issue. The villain is a slightly underpowered, but still quite powerful, uh, Egghead. Egghead's more a giant man villain, so you've got uh, slightly odd. When I first looked at it, I thought it was Puppet Master, because he was talking about radioactive material. He's got the radioactive material to control the Avengers, so slightly unusual, I thought. Well, next story, still Egghead. Egghead still sticks around, but this time he's got the swordsman. I love this glorious red cover, and also dramatic, of course, there's the connection between these two characters. So he's blasting poor old Goliath. Um, and it's always probably best to turn around the other way sometimes with these things. And they did actually the similar. Goliath, they, I don't think they never knew. They didn't really know what to do with Goliath on the cover. He sort of sometimes is one size, one size, sort of crunched in at different places. It was always a very odd character. But this is a real good story. Again, Gene Cohen, brilliant artwork. And uh, excellent story with Goliath there. Anyway, this is uh, goes into the Ultron story. And of course, you've got Vision at this point. Betrayal! And this is Barry Smith. So that's what I was saying about lots of churn in terms of uh, the artists. Great story and some really brilliant artwork. Here. Very unusual artwork. Of course, it's very different from his uh, Conan, Conan period. So just going to just looking for the brilliant that Vision one. That's just looks like really would be a brilliant poster to put on the wall. Just a great superb. I love that one. Then it leads on to the actual Ultron story. Die, Avengers, die! So you got them. Now, this is, uh, again, you've got, still got Barry Smith is still doing the artwork here. Just a great story. You've got lots of great vision action all the way through this. And, of course, you've got quite a powerful team at this point. You've got Thor, Iron Man, Goliath. Not enough like the original Avengers at this point, because, I mean, obviously, Captain America isn't just not in it, but you've got Black Panther, etc. And, of course, the vision. So it's quite a... Probably more powerful than any time before, since. So, or before even. So, we've got a growing man. This is obviously into the Kang story. A Kang, you can see Kang. Kang is very tiny in this one. This is issue 69, Kang the Conqueror. And uh, you, what you've got here is the Grand Master. You've got Grand Master turns up, and it's uh, obviously Grand Master is always doing these stupid uh, schemes and things, which he always loses. He must fight, he must be quite depressing every time. He always. Whenever the Avengers are end up, you must say, oh, forget it. I'm not even going to win this game. Yet again, I'm going to lose. So uh, you've got uh, the Grandmaster, who speaks, etc. as the Grandmaster turns up. A bit like his uh, mate, the Collector. He's uh, always uh, similar sort of problems. Never does very well. One of the elders of the universe, he's thinking he would have worked it out. However, great story, next one. Squadron Sinister. Of course, Squadron Sinister are making it look like that they're evil villains. But they're not. They're just alternate universe Obviously, the Avengers, basically. 
and at Hyperon, you've got Doctor Spectrum, Wizard, etc. And at Nighthawk, I was going to call him Blackhawk for a few seconds, but uh, you got that story. Of course, later on, they became a very successful team in their own right, with lots and lots of Squadron Supreme. Superb little, love that one. When strikes the Squadron Sinister, thus speaks Kang. You've got brilliant, obviously, Kang there, he's obviously plotting away. Does he do the right thing? Well, of course not, never does. However, on to the next story, which is issue 72. This is Scorpio. Scorpio, absolutely superb. You've got the Zodiac as well in this. So you've got uh, now the face of Scorpio there, and I probably can't turn to the page. When I did this, oh, there it is. I was going to say, just doing a quick run through before, I could turn to that page in seconds, but a brilliant bit of Zodiac. Of course, Zodiac came back a lot later, issue 120, 119 period. But uh, this is obviously connected with the Daredevil and also Nick Fury's story. So you've got that, and then you've got the Sons of Serpents, they turned up again. And this again, I say, quite a bit of a churn of this, you've got Black Panther in the story, and this time it's Frank Giacoya. God, Gordon Cover. yeah, I never say these people's names. My apologies for saying their names completely wrong. Anyway, son, Sting of the Serpent, and of course it's connected with Black Panther there, because you've got the next issue, this is issue 74, and I love the way, again, this was always a problem, Goliath, they never knew what to do. Look at the size of poor Goliath there. The way he's, uh, his hand, you think he'd be trying to save poor old um, Yellow Jacket. His hand's like completely slightly off, off where he is there. It's ridiculous. Actually saying that, I was going to point out. Oh, oh yeah, that's the, I was going to point that out again. One of these uh, the earlier covers. Again, Goliath, they never knew what to do. Look at that, he's sort of crammed in there. Really? How would he have got in that house? Very odd. But they did this quite a lot, and this is where he's got his hand stretched out here. Poor old Nitty crushing poor old Quicksilver. Quicksilver returns. Now, of course, he left Wander and uh, Quicksilver. They were, after the Magneto story, they were gone. That's 25 issues. And, of course, they're returning, which is quite good. We've got Archon the Magnificent. A real good yarn, actually. I thoroughly enjoyed this story. So, uh, really... Archon is not particularly a villain, so it's uh, so it's quite well done in that respect. I think it's uh, actually very odd. Just I just noticed there. Of course, uh, Quicksilver is in purple at that point. Um, obviously later, blue, it's a light blue. Then you got the Avengers number seventy nine, and you got the Grim Reaper brings together the Lethal Legion, not the Masters of Evil, but the Lethal Legion this time. Power Man, Swordsman, Living Laser, and the Man Ape. Probably slightly, uh, they could have probably found some other characters, but Mane, why not? Put him in. Now, uh, obviously, all uh, not very successful villains from previous issues, and they looking very angry in that picture. And, of course, they're doing well against uh, Captain America, who is now see, well, back into the storyline as well. And, again, some superb artwork there, and I'm John Basima. Absolute loathy. Of course, it's like I say, a very powerful team. This you've got Thor, you've got Iron Man, Captain America, Goliath. But of course, nah, they don't last very long. Then on to the next issue, which is well for me anyway. So that was issue uh, seventy-nine. Well, it was next issue eighty. <laughs> they didn't last very long at all. Oh, really? Is that it? Anyway, coming of Red Wolf. Yes. Really enjoyed the Red Wolf. There was, of course, a series of Red Wolf comics as well. Uh, this is obviously, I assume, from this, the coming of the Red Wolf. I think this must have been his first appearance, I guess, from this. And of course, uh, though, why the uh, Thor and Iron Man, etc., would be particularly worried about this character. Now, Lobo, attack! Ah. It's still a good year. This issue is one of my favourites. Not particularly because it's a great story. In fact, it's not one of the best. It's got obviously the Red Wolf. It's a continuation of this story, Red Wolf story. But it was one of the ones that I picked up many years before I started collecting comics at uh, Victoria Station. And I remember just picking it up thinking, Avengers, Avengers. Hmm. And this cover was dramatic, obviously, with Scarlet Witch and the vision there. Of course, sort of you. See, there's going to be a romance later on, so it's really quite nice in that uh, connection on that cover. And when a legend dies, is this the end of a superhero? Of course not. On to the next story, you've got this Daredevil story, Avengers Assemble. And what a great little story. This is absolutely superb with, of course, Daredevil. And we're back into the Zodiac story, which sort of like been half forgotten about from the previous early issue. 
So this one, you've got Daredevil, and we can say, only we can say, but City and Chains. It's a great little yard, especially the bit with uh, Daredevil at the end. I love that. This one, absolute classic. Actually, this is a really nice condition copy. Again, my favourite. You've got this beautiful red. I love, I don't know whether you could have done every single cover in red. I would have bought every single issue, but just had this lovely bright red at the back, and also the yellow as well. And this one, of course, is Valkyrie and our Lady Liberators. Of course, there's a twist in the story, which I'm not going to say, but of course, you've got Medusa, and you've got Black Widow, and all the sorts of things. Obviously, Scarlet Witch and Wasp there as the characters in the good old The Liberators. Now, that would have been a great series. I don't know why they never ended up doing a series called The Liberators, a comic that could have been, but never was. And I love this one. It's also got uh, Roy Thomas and Jeannie Thomas as well. I just love that they're included. And of course, you've got Nighthawk there, obviously not the Nighthawk. And also you've got uh, Doc Doom there, though not the real one, because of course they're up in uh, good old Rutland, Vermont. And you've got uh, good old uh, Valkyrie there. Great character. Of course, later in the Defenders. And then you've got good old Archon again. Archon the Magnificent, or whatever. This time with, with the Enchantress. An absolutely great story. And you've got, of course, the uh, Black Knight as well. Sword and the Sorceress. So we've got that story there. Weirdly, you'd have thought that they would have put the Black Knight on the uh, front cover. Quite often when I'm looking at these going through like this, it's quite often you look at it and think, hmm. It's only when you look at it again you think, it's very strange because the story is so solidly, obviously Black Knight there and the Enchantress. Why no Black Knight? No mention of Black Knight. Very strange. Now you got this one, the Squadron Sinister again. And this is obviously the, uh, but a slightly different Squadron Sinister. You've got lots of these characters here who, I uh, don't know if they ever, re well, maybe you've got those sort of characters there. And I'm going to turn around and say, I have no idea, I can't remember what their names are. <laughs> Great character. Oh, here's some, uh, uh, for more super types, they've taken over our meeting room. You've got obviously, uh, they wandered into the room and they said, who are you? So uh, slightly different uh, squadron uh, sinister at this point. Why are they? They were still called squadron sinister at this point. Who knows? However, now that was issue 85. Now I've got a bit of a jump here in things. I've got 89. Now the story went slightly off on the Cree and Squall Wars. So, you, and also Annalis was in this one. And Captain Marvel, of course. The only alien is a dead alien. And you got that one. Now I'm just going to quickly turn this page. So some of the uh, comic never ever can do it exactly right without ripping half the fragments off. Oh, the only good alien, and you've got obviously their vision, obviously Quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch, obviously meeting Captain Marvel on the roof. Obviously, he's a, uh, of course, they didn't. But that story leads on to quite a few issues. There was quite a few issues. It went all the way up to issue 97. So I'm just going to, I know I've got 97. I'm just going to go show you 92. And it's still 15 cents. Was it 15 cents there? Yeah, 15 cents there. Well, that's a bit of luck. It's still 15 cents. Now, I have no idea because it says 6p on this one. 20, oh, didn't last very long at that price, unfortunately. So you've got 92 cents. Then I just noticed on 97, it's gone up to 20 cents. So uh, you've got... Uh, Clearly, there's still the stories with uh, the scrolls and all the other characters. And I actually got a lovely bit sequence here, which actually feeds onto the late, latest story. You've got, uh, obviously, a bit of Golden Age action. Roy Thomas always loves putting in some of the uh, Golden Age characters. Some of them, of course, who are real. Some of them are obviously not characters. I love this, this thing. I must admit, this was thing. I always wish that I got some of these Stranko posters. I imagine they are immensely collectible now. Also loved the checklist at this point as well. Well, the checklist all the way through, actually, guys. You've got Ronan, you've got all the... Very often you've got uh, Reed Richards in the story. Then go on to the story 96. We're obviously going through, again, the Kree Scroll War. Brilliant. Yeah. Superb. And, of course, got Ronan. And, of course, you've got a slightly um, bad condition scroll there as well. So it's a... That's a, that's a superb bit of artwork. I love that artwork. It's just classic. Let's just turn to this page. Never can get the, uh, yeah, brilliant bit of New Adams there. Andromeda Swarm. 
absolutely superb. So that was a great issue, which led on to the last issue of that uh, storyline. And this one, slightly, and then John Buscema this time. There was lots of keep churning. There was never a consistent Avengers artist. It always seemed to just keep churning. So you've got Godhood's End. You've got Annihilus there, obviously, in the negative zone. And uh, absolute high-impact story. I really love that Kree scroll War. Actually, I actually in some ways prefer it when I'm reading in the epic because it's got a nice continuous story. But uh, in this, of course, I've got very bitty stories, so it uh, makes it less enjoyable to read. But you've got, uh, again, the introduction, of course, of the Golden Age characters. Again, Roy Thomas putting the, those, as you can see on the front cover, all hurtling towards their, obviously, the Finn. Maybe one more slightly more obscure of the Golden Age characters did appear. I think one issue, the Finn. Then you've got... Uh, Good old Aries story. I love this one. This is a superb bit of artwork. Barry Smith. Barry Smith again. And this was Sal Basima. Absolutely, of course, you've got Goliath sort of being lost. They don't know where Goliath is at this point. But you've got, obviously, the uh, Avengers are all battling uh, each other because of uh, Ares, obviously, the God of War, manipulating. And you've got Hawkeye and all those sorts of stuff. Great. Sorry. On to the next one with Hercules. And, of course, the whole story is set in... Uh, Olympus. And again, you've still got brilliant, brilliant artwork by uh, Barry Smith. I love this one. Now, I haven't got issue 100. I did have issue 100. I regret getting rid of that because now, of course, it is immensely collectible. Great little tale. But I've got it in uh, Epic Collection. So then on to, and I'm going to slightly go f further than 100. I'm going to go to uh, 113 with a bit of a gap. Because there's quite a few great stories in between, but I haven't got. I mean, he's got 101. This is a real nice story, and again, change of artist again. So you've got this time Rick Buckler, Rich Buckler, Rick Buckler. Don't know how that said. And then on to, of course, the uh, good old uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision. Absolutely superb issue, and you've got Scarlet Witch slightly angry all the way through the story, and of course you've got uh, Mantis. Got Mantis and a Swordsman storyline. So that was quite good. And that was the run through of those. Before I finish, I'm just going to go through the Avengers annuals. I haven't got all the Avengers annuals. I've got uh, this one, which is <laughs> without the back page. This is the Avengers one. I got this for next to nothing. It was one of those ones you think, wow, I love it. 49 page free for one of the classics. Now, I, obviously, the uh, epic collection is much nicer than this. But it's uh, still, what a great story. I had a great storyline with all the characters going off and battling different people. So you've got sort of Goliath and Iron Man, and then, of course, against the Swordsman, etc. And you've got Execution and Enchantress battling against Hercules and Scarlet Witch. So it was one of those great stories with a couple, a bit like the Avengers Defenders War when they went off and had separate stories. A bit like the Justice Society of America and Justice League, of course where they would do these things. you got Mandarin, of course, and you got a brilliant, uh, I love all the uh, pictures of all the various characters there around the edge. And then also what you've got at the back, even better, you've got some lovely uh, showing you the details of behind the scenes of the building. So uh, the Avengers Mansion, as well as, of course, classic, uh, all the uh, old Avengers, as well as the new Avengers. Yeah. Then on to probably one of my favourites, the Avengers 2, where they battle the old Avengers. And, of course, you've got the uh, Hulk. They haven't got Captain America in this point. Obviously, it would have been slightly confusing if you would... Uh, but, of course, you've got the slight confusion, of course, of Goliath and uh, the Wasp characters are in there. So, uh, but that's a quite good... There's been a bit of a time-travelling story because of uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Doom, maybe. And Scarlet Centurion is the character, the main villain in this story. And you've got, of course, great opportunity for lots and lots of, uh, in, like, obviously, Reed Richards, Fantastic Four. You've got, obviously, uh, the X-Men, Submariner, Daredevil. So it's a real great way of introducing all, virtually all of them. And I mentioned Doctor Strange. There's old Doctor Strange. So you've got Doctor Strange there. And, of course, they've been uh, all resolved, of course, at the end, which is always the best way in these stories. Though, in many ways, if it was like the standard sort of Star Trek universe when they have alternate universe, I always felt that they should have left a sort of couple of bits of opportunity for maybe a spin-off of the alternate universes for future stories. But that was an absolutely superb annual. I love that one. King Size Special. I always love sometimes when they call them annuals, sometimes King Size Special. 
Was it king size or was it an annual? I always called it annual, but it does say king size. King size special. And then you got, uh, and then of course, to make it clear, Mighty Avengers annual, or was it special? Obviously it says there, special. Now of course it was slightly, went downhill a bit because of course, it's just got reprints in this one. You got the uh, Kang the Conqueror story, and you've got uh, the Spider-Man story. Um, this one here is also reintroducing the mysterious Kang. The mysterious Kang. Why do they call it mysterious Kang? Anyway, so you've got the Spider-Man story. Obviously, Kang is manipulating old Spider-Man storyline. But it's, it's good. It's a good little story there. But, uh, yeah, the annuals, unfortunately, did sort of go down a little bit. Though, of course, later on, they did get back to original stories, which is really good. And that was it. So that was a run through of all of my American comics. Now on to the epic collections and omnibuses.